Well, well, well. I think that's the best welcome I've had this year. We do celebrate our tourism industry. Um, it's absolutely fabulous to be here. It's a lovely location, and I'm thrilled to bits to be what effectively is your warm-up act. Um, so here we go. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. Uh, it's wonderful to be here again, and I hope um, that you're in for a wonderful evening. Good luck to all our nominees. Uh, the message from Visit Norfolk's Autumn Conference was very, very clear that we need to start shouting out louder about we've got what we've got on offer here in this great county. Um, indeed, if I say on my sheet here, let's start doing it here and now, my title, the EDP, is leading on a big Norfolk tourism story tomorrow. So um, we regularly feature these stories and you'll see them all the way through my titles because we hope we support this great industry like no other. The lineup of finalists assembled here tonight for the EDP Visit Nor uh, Norfolk Tourism Awards says it all. In my view, it's both exciting and exhilarating. From the finest independent hotels to restaurants serving up the best the region has to offer, from memorable days out on the coast to unforgettable trips and family attractions, our county, which I call, certainly on my Twitter account, the Great County, has the lot. Quite apart from the breadth of attractions we have to offer from the stunning broads and our unrivaled city of Norwich, there is the guarantee of an authentic Norfolk welcome. Let's not forget how important it is to cherish and celebrate our tourism industry, industry generating as it does nearly £2.8 billion to the regional economy each year and directly supporting 50,000, 50,000 jobs. We can be reassured that our number one industry, remember that number one industry, is in the safe hands of people in this room tonight from the evergreen figures of the Norfolk tourism industry to dynamic young aspirants bringing all their energy and creativity. I've already met some of those people tonight. As I say, the EDP follows through with shouting loud and proud, and I encourage you to get the paper tomorrow. Um, before we continue with the awards and, uh, and the dinner you're no doubt uh, are waiting, uh, let us thank the sponsors who've made the evening possible, and most of all, Norfolk's inspirational tourism businesses, which have given us such good reason to celebrate all through this year. So thank you very much to all our sponsors and supporters. It's great to have you with us tonight. We simply couldn't do this event without you. Um, our very special thanks to main sponsor, Host Seasons, uh, to Visit Norfolk, and of course, the Norfolk Tourism Tourist Attraction Association who are here for the first time this evening. Thank you to them. Later, the NTAA will be awarding the Berry Savary Award uh, in memory of the founder of the Muckleborough Collection. Berry's aim when donating this was to recognise the excellent work done by the NTAA. It spotlights the tourism offering in this county and supports and encourages excellence within the tourism attractions across the county and many of them represented here. Now, it's uh, my pleasure and it's time to welcome to stage a great supporter of tourism in this county, the region and actually the country at large, Mr Simon Olfer, Managing Director of Ho Seasons. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, it's a real pleasure to be here tonight amongst Norfolk's best tourism businesses. And what a night we have in store, celebrating the shining lights of the region's tourism, rivaling the best in the UK. I've stood up a few times this year to talk about host seasons, Norfolk, and the wider tourism community. And I can assure you this isn't because I like the sound of my own voice but a genuine desire to be part of the wider tourism community in Norfolk. I have a real passion for Norfolk. They do say home is where the heart is, and this is my home. Like all of you in the room, I believe that a successful tourism industry is essential for economic growth. 
This year, tourism certainly has had an impact. This time last year, I talked about the need to ensure we invest to stay ahead of the game. Whilst I wasn't talking directly to businesses in the room, it was a key message about the need to stay competitive in a very, very busy market. Whilst I take no credit for this, the county has really embraced this idea. And everywhere I go, I see people really working harder and smarter and investing more time and money into their tourism businesses. Look at Pensthorpe, Richardson's, the Norfolk Showground, to name but a few. This can only be good for our future. But this wasn't the only reason that 2013 has been so successful. The weather really played a role in tourism this year, a role of two halves. It might be hard to remember, but we had snow on the ground for many weeks in January and February. And the cold and gloomy weather over Easter spelt disaster for many. But May was a turning point, and one of the best summers in the last 10 years followed. As the sun shone, people once again chose to holiday at home. And what a great time they had, boating on the beautiful Norfolk Broads, cycling through the region's forests, bathing on our golden sandy beaches, and enjoying the plentiful local attractions of our popular seaside towns. So what about 2014? Well, it's going to be a busy year in more ways than one. Whether it's the Commonwealth Games, the World Cup, the Scottish referendum, the economy, the weather, ongoing discussions about EU membership, all of these distractions will play havoc with consumer booking patterns. So we need to be prepared. However, the biggest challenge that we face is the pace at which technology is embedding itself into our day-to-day -day lives and the lives of tourism. 2013 has seen the biggest surge in blurring, where people increasingly cross the boundaries between their work and their leisure lives. How many people in this room keep in touch with their work emails whilst on holiday? I suspect about 90%. If we take this further, how many children want to, st want to stay connected with their social network whilst on holiday? I suspect most. A recent survey noted that 70% of people who are on holiday upload holiday snaps whilst on holiday. Why is all this important? Well, it means that Wi-Fi is fast becoming as important as a bed when choosing a hotel, a lodge, a boat, or a cottage. So the biggest challenge tourism businesses face in the room isn't just 2014. I urge you to look further ahead at the role technology is going to play in future generations of holiday bookers. How will teenagers of today be booking their holidays? And what holidays do they want to book? Whilst this seems far away, the iPhone wasn't invented seven years ago. Look how that has changed our lives. Look how it's changed the lives of our children. I wonder what sort of holiday she's going to book and how she's going to book them. At the recent ABTA travel convention in Croatia, big names in tourism such as TUI, Thomas Cook, Disney and Virgin were all on stage talking about 2014. 
Not one of them mentioned new products or destinations despite having them. Every single one was focused on the customer journey, social engagement, the use of technology, and making holidays more interactive, from the booking journey to the actual holiday itself. It might seem that this is all very far-fetched and doesn't affect your business, and it isn't what your customers want, but technology is coming, and it's coming fast at an unprecedented rate. Look, is, look at what is happening in the budget hotel world and ask yourselves how long it will be before some of this technology it becomes the norm. We're reimagining the city centre hotel with compact contemporary rooms right in the heart of the city, designed to give you comfort and convenience at every step. We call it Hub by Premier Inn. You're connected even before you arrive. Check in in moments, either online, through the app, or on arrival. Our rooms are a great place to work or relax in. Stylish, flexible, and beautiful, they're packed with clever features to make your stay comfortable. are located right in the middle of the action and the app helps you make the most of the local area. Whether you want to kick back and watch a movie or just turn in for a good night's sleep, Hub has it covered. Each hub serves distinctive and delicious simple food well done throughout the day. You can book ahead of time or order there and then. City Centre, beautifully designed smart hotels. Welcome to Hub by Premier Inn. So what does all this mean? It means that whilst we need to work hard to maintain our standards, we now need to put technology in the very heart of our businesses and recognize that holidays as we know them today are going to change. We need to invest in technology to keep up with unprecedented and fast-moving customer expectation. That's all for me for now. Enjoy your evening, and I wish every business tonight the greatest success in the awards. Have a great time and please enjoy your meal. Thank you.